So I wanted to kind of share like how unfair some magic players are to your local game store and why your local game store is honestly as valuable as it is. I went out and I wanted to learn how expensive it was to rent out a, a, a venue that to basically run FNM. The premise was exactly Friday Night Magic. So I contacted about 10 different vendors and 10 different venues uh, from uh, game stores to uh, even, you know, like game stores that didn't do magic, that did maybe Pokemon or something else and wanted to know, hey, how much would it cost for me to rent out? And a lot of these stores actually do rent out their space. They have a business model where they encourage people to rent out their space for parties and events and just like a magic tournament. That's an F and M. So I wanted to know how much it would cost on a regular basis. You know, every Friday night magic, obviously there would be some type of discount, right? Uh, chairs and tables, refreshments. And it turned out to be very expensive. So out of the 10 venues that I contacted and we talked about, four of them came back with prices. The other six, I, I don't know what's going on with them, but they seem very not willing to actually like tell me a price, which I guess is, makes sense because maybe they don't know I'm a, a serious, and I am serious about renting out a place if it financially makes sense uh, once a week, right? because why own a store when you only really need it for one event a week at most? Almost like an anime convention where you just rent out the space for a very short period of time, you sell all your goods while people were waiting for that short period of time. It's no different in my mindset, that business model where instead of having a space for a whole month, signing a five-year lease, locking you in long-term, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna rent out a space every week and then sell all you know sell more that one day because everyone knows that's the only day that you're gonna be there and you're gonna host tournaments and stuff. So I I looked at that model. That's what I'm doing. And the cheapest place I could find off Westheimer was four hundred dollars for the rental of the place for a day. A day means uh, noon, but there is some you know like hey you gotta put the chairs and things up uh, until midnight. And again, there's some takedown. So it's not exactly midnight, but let's just call it 10 hours. Uh, 10 hours of your choosing, if you will, on Friday or Saturday, you do have to give some notice and you do have to pay a deposit, which obviously is fair because you're renting out the place. So it costs the cheapest place I could find for 50 people, a reasonable place for 50 people, a party of 50 would be $400 and for the just the space, and then $200 for the chairs, the tables, and some light refreshments, if you will, just like some light soda and water. Um, that sounded pretty reasonable. And then if you tip, you know, I, I always tip for venues and so on because it's, you know, you want them to come back. You, you, wanna, you want them to be excited to set up things and pull down the, I mean, again, you know, a tip goes a big way to creating a relationship with that you want long term, be it a restaurant you eat at, that they always see you, um, then you know, hey, they, you're going to be there tomorrow, like or next week. You might as well, you know, give them a tip. So I'm estimating at the cheap end, it's about seven hundred dollars. At the more expensive end, I've got quotes up to fourteen hundred dollars, all inclusive, right? And I've even called the uh, Hiltons, not not the Hiltons, the um, Ramaha, the Ramadans, not Ramadan. What the hell am I talking about? Um, the Ram, there, there's a hotel chain right by me, and it's like you know they hold conferences, and basically you know I spoke at a lot of conferences, and I have some type of, I don't think membership, but they know who I am, so I ask, okay, how much would it cost to rent out this facility for a day? And it's, you know, it's very expensive at those type of hotel places, but I think it's almost like the Eric Cartman episode where the guy's like, do you want anything you want? And they, but the service is also very good. They assured me uh, it would be same as like renting it out for a business conference, but it would be instead of like being a bit, so I've been a speaker at a lot of these conferences, but instead of like being a conference, it would just be all day event where you could like trade and sell cards and it's still uh, north of 1400, 1400 is just like the flat line. If that's like, Hey, you're taking the facility as is now that facility can hold 200 people, 150 at least. 
So I was running around doing experiments because I too, like I, in my mind, why should I have a physical store when I'm only really needing the store once a week? I don't have the time to manage my store. I have not been able to find any reliable employees. We found some people and they just, you know, we tested them and they all failed. And it's like, so like my, my point is very simple. Like if a person cannot post uh, something on Facebook that I told them to post, well, I mean, how are they gonna run the store when I'm not there with all that expensive merchandise? So I'm taking my business model, I'm thinking of a different business model that may make more sense in the future for Magic players. And that business model is instead of rent, having a store lease for five years and having been locked down to that location, you could just figure out a network of all these venues negotiate the price of each venue to kind of get the cheap price. And maybe you find one venue that you really like, that your player base really likes, just keep that venue. But how much does it cost? And this really comes back to my concern that you know a lot of people, half the Magic players, they're not even willing to pay $5. $5 to uh, EDH FNM. And that is very concerning to me because the cost is more than $5, surprise, surprise, to break even. And that doesn't include liability, that doesn't include cleanup. You know, if um, for instance, like somebody damages the wall or something, you're gonna be responsible for that. Uh, for instance, somebody clogs the toilet, blows up something in the toilet, things are gonna get, so this is like the minimal. This is like if everything goes right, everyone behaves themselves, everyone wears a belt. This is the minimal cost for 50 people at the cheapest venue I could find that was a reasonable venue to host a Magic tournament was $700 after tip for 50 people. That's about $15 a person and you make a tiny bit of profit. And people are complaining about their FNM being $5 and giving promos and store credit and free pizza and drink. There's no way in hell. What happened here was Wizard of Coast, being the smart, greedy company they are, they somehow pushed all this cost. You know, like Wizard of Coast, back when I was a kid, they had a store. So that was Wizard of Coast had to pay the mall rent. Um, my store was next to JCPenney's. It was an official Wizard of Coast store. And they held tournaments. They did all, they basically was a local game store, but it was owned by Wizard of the Coast. They have since figured out it's not profitable to do that but they pushed on the cost to the game store owner with the idea that, hey, you can make money selling packs. and like, But then it doesn't make any sense. These singles are cheaper on secret layers and then the packs are cheaper on Amazon. So now the only part of the model that exists is that the players are coming for Friday Night Magic and paying $5 expecting promos and cr at least credit back, if not cash back, because that's how they've been trained. and. In one point in time, when you were selling boxes to these same customers, oof, yeah, that you might have been able to break even at best. When you were selling singles and things, I mean, today, look at online. I mean, hey, why can't you sell your single for the same price as the lowest person on TCG player who doesn't own a physical store, who's working from his like you know basement? <laughs> it's called overhead, okay? Uh, can you can you match me the price of the loads? I mean, it's so. Here's kind of my frustration. Let me let me just be very clear. Like, why it's so frustrating is in this model that I have. It's still five dollars. You cannot do five dollars. You couldn't even do ten. You have to do fifteen to break even at the cheapest model point. If you wanted to go to a nice nicer hotel with you know better parking and all that stuff. A, you still your break even is at 20, 25. And that doesn't include product, that does not include a judge, that doesn't include your time to organize it, that doesn't include the potential liabilities of, you know, you don't have no idea what your customers are gonna do with an, in this venue that may damage the product and maybe they're gonna hold you reliable. So please respect the local game stores that are hosting events, because I promise you they're not selling as many boxes as you think they are. Everyone knows Amazon. I mean, Wizard of Coast promotes it like every day on their Twitter. Hey guys, there's another Amazon sale. Great. 
Uh, and also, you know, the idea that, hey, I deserve, I mean, it, it's just, a, it's a little weird. Like, it's a little weird, to be honest. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you guys feel. Bye, guys.